12.17 has a ton of meta shifting changes in store, with 20 different champions being altered. Hecarim buffs are looking extremely OP and he'll be a major force this patch. Sivir is finally being nerfed, so we'll have some more diversity down in the bot lane. With the help of our challenger players and analyzing the most recent data, we strive to bring you guys the most accurate solo queue tier list for every single patch. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Four brand new skins are set to release this patch as we have King Viego and a new Zenith line for Blitz, Jace, and Lee Sin. Starting off with the item changes, Seeker's Arm Guard becomes more cost efficient for 12.17. AP on the item is going from 20 to 30. Seeker's was nerfed earlier on in the season and since then we hadn't really seen it prioritized as much but that is likely to change now as a result of these buffs. Many champs can just rush Seekers, sit on it, and complete their mythic item, and then go into Zhanya's later on. Stopwatch purchase will be more expensive for 12.17, with the cost going from 650 to 750 gold. Many players would just purchase a stopwatch for the mid game with no intention of building it into Zhanya's or Guardian Angel, so this nerf will make that strategy a little less efficient. The cost of Zhanya's is going up from 2600 to 3000 gold, but in exchange will provide 15 more AP and 5 more ability haste. 15 AP is worth about 326 gold, while 5 haste has a gold value of 133. 326 plus 133 is 460 gold, while Zhanya's is being increased by 400, so you're getting a little more bang for your buck once Zhanya's is completed. Even though Seekers is being buffed, champs like Zed and Fizz can actually benefit from the Zhanya's adjustment. So much of Zed and Fizz's all-in power can be countered by Azania's purchase, so now that the enemy will need to farm a few more waves to purchase the item, you will find some more windows of opportunity. As for major AP Assassin players, it's really going to depend on the matchup as to whether you'll be liking these changes or not. In less volatile lanes where you can easily farm a few more waves, then the added AP and haste will be great, but a more expensive Zhanya's will definitely bite in certain situations. Items that build out of stopwatch are the focus for this patch as Guardian Angel has its cost increased from 2800 to 3000. AD is going from 40 to 45 to compensate. 5 AD is worth about 175 gold, so you're actually losing a bit of gold efficiency from this change. Making our way over to the top lane changes, first on the list is Camille. Passive percent health shield is going from 17 to 20 percent. E bonus AD ratio is bumped up from 75 to 90 percent. Some really nice changes here that will amplify Camille's dueling power and will solidify her as a strong S tier pick. Set is next in line with his W AD ratio going from 20 to 25 percent bonus AD. E slow is buffed as well, going from 50 to 70 percent. Set has been hovering around an A tier standing the past while, and even with these buffs, we don't see that changing. Renekton was in a good spot for solo Q for a while there, but that's about to change in 12.17. Q damage is dropping from 65 scaling to 205 to 60 scaling to 180. Bonus AD ratio is increased, however, from 80 to 100%. Q empowered damage is lowered as well, going from 100 scaling to 300 to 90 scaling to 260. Bonus AD ratio on empowered Q is up from 120 to 140%. Riot's really trying to incentivize full-on damage builds with these changes. Tank Renekton with a Frostfire Gauntlet or Sunfire Aegis will become much worse moving forward as there's more value in the Prowlers and Blade build now. Even though an offensive build will be better value than Tank, it's still going to be weaker than last patch, so we'll be moving Renekton from A into B tier. The 12.17 top lane tier list features Aatrox, Darius, and Shen as the most OP picks. Believe it or not, Udyr is actually seeing more success as a top laner than a jungler right now. Ghost with Teleport is what the majority of players are running to great results. It's the same build as Jungle Udyr with the Sunfire into Demonic Embrace, but the Rune Page is Grasp instead of Conquer. We'll go into detail about the Maokai changes when covering jungle, but they'll provide a nice boost to top lane Maokai as well. Maokai's Q damage is going up, and R becomes more reliable to hit. The best low elo top laners of the patch are Garen, Mordekaiser, and Yorick. Shen, Aatrox, and Darius are all great bands. It's extremely likely that Hecarim ends up the biggest winner of the patch, as he's receiving a bunch of impactful changes. Q base damage drops by 20 at max rank, but every other Q change is a buff. Bonus AD ratio is going from 90 to 95%. Q damage per stack is up from 2 to 4%, and the scaling per stack is increased from 3 to 6% bonus AD. Q cooldown per stack is lowered from 1 to 0.75 seconds. Max number of stacks is up from 2 to 3. 
Q stack falloff will now be one per stack at the end of duration instead of all at once. The mana cost on Q is up by two at rank one, but lowered by 10 at max rank. If you take a look at the background gameplay, Hecarim Q is dealing more damage at level three, even without items. So the change becomes even more insane when you start stacking AD to benefit from the AD ratio buffs. The W changes are ridiculous buffs as Hecarim will now gain 15 scaling to 35 armor and magic resist while W is active. Champions that can thrive in extended skirmishes are amazing for the current meta post durability update, so these Q and W buffs will allow Hecarim to fit in perfectly. Upfront Burst will become slightly weaker as Riot is nerfing the minimum E damage bonus AD ratio from 55 to 50%. Minimum knockback on E is down from 250 to 150 as well. As for the maximum E damage, it's going from 110 to 100% bonus AD. Max knockback drops from 450 to 350. Cooldown on E is being changed from 20 scaling to 16 to 17 seconds at all ranks. Lastly, the fear duration on ultimate is lowered from 0.75 scaling to 2 seconds to 0.75 scaling to 1.5 seconds. So a lot to take in here, but the TLDR is that Hecarim will be a major force for 12.17. After hovering around the B tier for many months, Hecarim jumps all the way up into S. The jungle meta is going to be super exciting to track this patch, as Maokai could very well be making a splash. Passive cooldown will now be reduced by one second when hit by large jungle monsters. Q base damage is lowered, however it will now have max health scaling on it. As you can see in the background gameplay, this is a considerable damage buff and will only become stronger as the game goes on. Q damage to monsters receives a huge boost as well. You can see in 12.16 it was only dealing 86 damage to the small raptors, but for 12.17 it will be dealing 129 damage. E is where the compensation nerfs come in, as the percent max health damage is being completely removed from the spell. Base damage is going up, but as you can see in the comparison gameplay, it's still a net nerf. From 91 all the way down to 59 is a considerable hit to say the least. Mana cost is lowered though by 15 at all ranks, while the slow is going up from 35 to 45%. It's evident that Riot wants to phase out any E max strategy for Maokai and heavily shift focus over to Q. The fact the slow amount is being increased on E while the damage is down means it's going to be more of a utility spell that is maxed last. The final changes we have for Maokai are to his ultimate with its missile speed being buffed across the board. A new feature will be added to where you gain 40-60% to 60 decaying movement speed over 2 seconds when R hits a target. This buff is only for Maokai though and won't accelerate his teammates move speed. All in all, these are some spicy looking Maokai changes. Gank power at level 6 will be way stronger now, clear speed is going up tremendously for the exchange of less E damage, which is a trade off you'll take any day when playing tank Maokai. Initial prediction is that Maokai slots in as a good A tier jungler, but we'll have a more accurate ranking for our mid patch tier list once we get some time to play and see him on live servers. Graves is the first jungler buff for 12.17, as Riot will be increasing his R damage by 25 at all ranks. Q cooldown is also being lowered by 1 second at all ranks. Definitely not meta shifting buffs, but enough to lock Graves into an A tier spot. Riot has a few buffs planned for Nocturne with his attack speed ratio going from 0.68 to 0.72. Passive cooldown will be lowered from 14 to 13 seconds. Similar to the Graves buffs, the changes are welcomed, but by no means are they enough to move Nocturne up the tier list. A tier is where you'll find Noct for 12.17. Trundle is being hit by the nerf bat this patch as his W cooldown is increased from 15 scaling to 11 seconds to 18 scaling to 14 seconds. Clear speed becomes weaker early on. The early skirmish, however, doesn't really get hit as you're unlikely to use more than one W early on. Mid to late game teamfights are where you'll feel the nerf the most. As a result of this nerf, we will be moving Trundle from OP into S for 12.17. Wukong has fallen out of flavor in solo queue as of recent, but his presence in pro play forces Riot to nerf him. Base attack speed is going from 0.71 to 0.68. Base movement speed drops from 345 to 340. These nerfs won't kill Wukong, but there will definitely be many better junglers to choose from as he will be placed in our A tier. For the jungle tier list, OP tier will consist of Master Yi, Kane, and Fiddlesticks. Maokai and Hecarim will be the ones to watch this patch as they're going to have so much more potential due to their buffs. AP junglers who build Zhanyas like Fiddlesticks will become a little weaker as hitting that item completion is very key for the champ. Optimal low elo junglers are Amumu, Master Yi, and Shivana. Hecarim, Master Yi, and Kane are all great band choices. Moving on to the mid lane changes, let's have a look at the Twisted Fate buffs. Q AP ratio is going from 70 to 80%, not a super impactful buff considering TF doesn't build a ton of AP in his meta build. W mana cost is being lowered by 10 at all ranks, pretty negligible buffs overall, so Twisted Fate will remain in the B tier for mid lane. 
Casting his weakest point of the game is being buffed for 12.17, with his Q cooldown lowered by 1 second at all ranks and Q mana cost lowered by 10. This buff combined with other meta mids like Ari and Silas being nerfed will help put Kassadin in a great S tier position. Is it really a season of league if Azir isn't nerfed at some point due to pro play? WAP ratio is going from 60 to 50 percent, while his E cooldown is increased from 19 scaling to 15 seconds to 22 scaling to 16 seconds. Unless you're an Azir one trick, there isn't much reason to be playing him in solo queue for 12.17, as he finds a spot in our B tier. Ari had a good run on top of the solo queue meta for many months, but it's not looking good for 12.17. Base health is being lowered from 570 to 550, while her E charm duration is being lowered by 0.2 seconds at rank 1. Like most of the changes this patch, the nerfs aren't that big of a deal, but they are enough to shift Ari from S into A. Silas has been an OP tier staple for many patches now, but the nerfs this patch will have something to say about that. Base health is going from 595 to 575, while his Q cooldown is being increased by 1 second at all ranks. Will Silas fall out of meta as a result of these nerfs? Not at all. Will he be leaving the OP tier for the first time in months? Yes he will, as we'll be moving him into S. For the mid lane tier list, we have Zed, Victor, and Vex as the most broken mid lane carries. This will be the patch for Vex to really take over as one of the highest priority mid laners. Silas and Ari dropping down opens the door for Vex to become a solo queue monster. Vex already had a great time playing into Silas before his base health nerf, so the matchup will be even more one-sided for Vex. Although Renekton has played way more as a top laner, the nerfs will affect him for mid as well, so we'll be moving him from S into A tier. Swain, Malz, and Annie are the three mid lane recommendations for low elo. Zed, Vex, and Kassadin are a few of the best mid lane bans. A shift from lethality over to crit is what Riot has planned for Misfortune in 12.17. Q max becomes more optimal as the damage is going up by 20 at max rank. Q cast time will now match basic attack time. W mana cost is going from 45 to 35. W attack speed is up by 10% at all ranks. The E max poke strat takes a hit with the cooldown increased by a whole 4 seconds at max rank. Damage is going down by 30 at max rank, which is a huge nerf as well. E slow is being changed from 40 scaling to 60% to 50% at all ranks. R becomes more lethal with crit as the bonus critical chance damage is going from 20 to 30%. Q max will be the way to go now regardless of if you're playing lethality or crit. Kraken does become stronger but by no means will the lethality build be phased out as a result of these adjustments. Press the attack instead of comet and Q max instead of E is what we expect to change the most. MF will remain in the S tier for 12.17. Riot as a minor, Ezreal buff penciled in with his E cooldown lowered by 2 seconds at all ranks. Not going to alter Ezreal's power level a whole lot, so he will continue to be placed in our A tier. We've been waiting for more Sivir nerfs, and they'll be headed to live for 12.17. AD growth drops from 3 to 2.8. WAD ratio is being lowered by 5% at all ranks. Riot's playing it very safe in nerfing Sivir, as they evidently don't want to give her a killing blow that pushes her out of meta. These changes will remove Sivir's OP status, but she won't be dropping far, moving down into S. The ADC tier list has been consistently evolving the past while, and that trend continues in 12.17. With Sivir dropping into S tier, we'll be moving Caitlyn, Twitch, and Tristana into OP. Kate was just buffed last patch and is in an amazing spot now. Twitch has always been on the verge of an OP tier position, so Sivir dropping down gives us the ability to move him up. Tristana is a similar story to Kate, as her recent buffs has allowed her to rocket past all other ADCs in power. Sivir was obviously an outlier in recent patches, but now that she's been nerfed, there are many picks in and around that same strong S tier standing. Zeri is really the only garbage solo queue pick now due to her recent nerfs from 12.16. Best low elo botlane carries of the patch are Vagar, Misfortune, and Seraphine. Neela, Caitlyn, and Twitch are all good value bans. One of the most forgotten supports in the game being Rel will receive a few nice buffs this patch. W dismount movement speed is being increased from 250 to 280. E cooldown drops from 18 scaling to 11 seconds to 15 seconds at all ranks. E change is a buff early on and a nerf later, but considering supports can't acquire levels as quick as solo laners and you max E out second, the change is a buff for the majority of games. We had moved Rel into S tier last patch due to the even trout buffs, and these direct buffs will further solidify that S tier standing. Nami is being nerfed for 12.17, but only if you're running Electrocute. Nami E will now only count as one damage instance, nerfing the power of Electro. Aerie is actually winning more than Electrocute in solo queue, so all this nerf will do is give more priority to Aerie for 12.17. The Lucian Nami duo will take a decent hit though, as they were definitely way more lethal when Nami took Electro. Tarek has held one of the highest solo queue win rates for many patches now, so Riot has finally decided to nerf him. Base magic resists drop from 32 to 28, so Tarek now becomes more vulnerable into 
double ranged matchups. E cooldown will be increased by one second at all ranks. If anything, these changes will just lessen Tarek's blind pick ability, but won't alter his counter pick potential into other melee supports. Tarek remains in our S tier for 12.17. For the complete support tier list, it's going to be Janna and the Mumu as the most optimal carries. The cost increase to Zanyas will hit supports more than mid lane champions due to their lesser gold income. Amumu is one support who likes to build Zanya's second item, but he's not 100% reliant on it to be successful, so we expect him to be just fine. Mage supports like Zyra and Zareth will also take an indirect hit, but we don't see it being impactful enough to shift their tier list placements. Best low elo supports of the patch are Amumu, Brand, and Zyra. Renata Glask, Amumu, and Pike are on our ban list for 12.17. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there is your complete rundown of the 12.17 changes and how they will affect the solo queue meta. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you back soon.